start of round seven of this World Heavyweight Championship match. Up to this point, it's been a killing pace. Rexton lands a left to the face. Driscoll comes in, lands with a left to the body, crashes a right to the jaw. He's pouring leather on, and the champion forces a clinch here. The referee moves in, parts them. They move back out to the center of the ring. Driscoll is stalking the champion. Lands a left to the face, runs into a crashing right on the button. He backs away along the rope. The champion after him. But what more? Driscoll in close quarters. Bangs with left and right into the body. What a killing pace these men are setting. A left to the body and a right to the jaw. A beautiful combination by Driscoll. Driscoll again crashes that right in on the jaw. A hard right on the button. Another right and a left to the body. The champion seems a little bit dazed. And once again, he forces a clinch. The referee parts them. Ready, come on, come on. Moves inside. Puts the left to the body and a right to the jaw. Cracks the jaw. Seconds away from having a new world heavyweight champion. The count is six, seven, eight. Braxton is up at the count of nine. The referee wipes off his gloves. Driscoll moves in on him. Braxton backs away, trying to stay at long range. Driscoll's trying to feign him into position for a shot at the chip. He drives the left of the body and a right to the jaw. Another shot right to the jaw. Drives the champion reeling against the rope. The champion is trying to weather the round. He's holding on now. He spins Driscoll against the ropes in a corner. Bangs him with a right to the face. Driscoll is cut. He has a bad cut on his right eye. Blood streaming down his cheek. I did not see the blow cut the eye of Driscoll. The champion pours it on now. He's taking charge. Moving into close quarters. Pouring the leather into Driscoll. Driscoll is converted to the He's not fighting back. He's stunned by that fight to the jaw. Sagging on the rope. And there's a crashing right. Driscoll is down. It's the first time in his professional career he's ever been knocked off his feet. We'll go back and give you that knockdown over again in slow motion. This is Great Fights of Yesterday, bringing you the heavyweight championship bout between Sailor Braxton and Ernie Driscoll. Here's the blow that started the trouble, a right to the head. In 62 professional fights, Ernie Driscoll had never been knocked off his feet, and he was well ahead on points in the seventh round of his battle when the champion connected. Six, seven, eight. He's struggling to get to his feet. Driscoll's up at the count of nine. Groggy, he can't see out of that eye. And the champion's now giving him a brutal beating. Driscoll's fighting on instinct alone. The referee is stepping between the fighters to examine Driscoll's eye. Finish your dinner, Ernie. In a minute. The referee is leading Driscoll to his corner. Hey, Doc. Driscoll is protesting to the referee. He does not Are want you having a good stop. time? The doctor is coming into the ring. He is examining Ernie's right eye. There's no doubt there's something critically the matter with Driscoll's eye. There's something the matter with it, all right. Yes, they're going to stop the fight. Maybe it's you think I'm enjoying this. Knockout in the seventh Pauline. round. Great Fights of Yesterday has just brought you motion pictures of the championship bout between Sailor Braxton and Ernie Driscoll. Next week... Next week, Driscoll will be driving a taxi. No need to be sore about it. His wife will be making corsages at the Broadway florist shop. You know that's only temporary. Pinning them on women who had more sense than to marry a prize fighter. Look, honey, as soon as I've saved up a little more money, I can buy this gas station, see? And starve to death. There's good money in a gas station. A lot of the fight fans would remember me. Be glad to give me their business. Oh, sure. Two gallons of gas, boy. And don't forget to wipe the windshield. That's enough of that, Pauline. I'd have been a star if I hadn't married you. You were a showgirl. And I could have been the champion. Yeah, could have been. Pauline, I could make as much money in the gas business if, if you'd only have a little patience. I'm all out. We've stuck it up for four years. Give it another four months. Ernie, eat your dinner. I have to get back to work. It's my night to close up. Something new? Costume jewelry. Rhinestones around a $10 movement. They look almost good enough to be real. They might be real if I hadn't married a pug. Look, Pauline, I know it's been rough the last couple of years, but let's stop this rain. Try and make the best of it. What would it get me? It's a peace of mind, maybe. Smile once in a while. What have I got to smile about? Has it ever occurred to you that when I ride in a cab, I'd rather it would be in the back seat? Yeah, I guess you would. Want me to 
pick you up at 9 o'clock? Don't bother. Five three nine to Jive. Come in five three nine. I'm checking in, Stan. I'll be at my station in ten minutes. Okay, champ. Meet you in the drugstore for a cup of coffee. Hiya, champ. Hi, Stan. Hey, I see us on television tonight. Some battle, huh? Some battle. Junior's watching the fight with me, see? So you know what he says to me? He says, Daddy, he didn't really beat Uncle Ernie, did he? Nobody beats Uncle Ernie. You tell Junior I'll be over Sunday with a full box of bubble gum. Cup of coffee, Chuck. Pauline see the fight, too? Yeah. How'd she like it? She didn't. Well, she don't like to be reminded about you getting barred from the ring and kind of your eye. When a dame loves a guy, she doesn't like to see him take it on the chin. Sure. Look, you ain't kidding me, none. Right away, you figure you're not the top man in Pauline's life anymore just because you have a couple spats. Okay. Every married couple has spats. Don't take it so serious. Okay. You know what fixes you and Pauline? You have a couple kids. Yeah. She would like to have a boy like yours. Let me give you a little advice. You want to have kids? You got to break it gentle. Just like with Eloise, all the time she's saying, no kids, no kids, I don't want to be tied down, all that sort of stuff, see? So one night I come home, I got a big box of candy. Then I take her around the corner to Giuseppe's for dinner. After dinner, I buy her a couple of brandies. Then when I take her home, you know what I do? I whisper in her ear. That's the way you got to do it, champ. Break it gentle. See you at the garage, huh? Thanks, Dan. Shall I warm it up for you, Ernie? No, thanks. Give me a box of that candy. Sure, what size? The big one. Five bucks? That's all right. Wrap it up pretty like it was a present. Hi, fellas. Look what somebody brought me today. Call it Murder by Lloyd Morgan. New play? For Broadway. And I've got a chance to play the lead in it. A real chance. Oh, gee, that's great. I'll show up again. Maybe you think I don't. Three years in New York and not even a part in a failure. Nothing but television. Well, at least television's a living. Oh, a living, and that's all. Which reminds me, I got paid today. I owe you for my rainy day cab fares. 480, wasn't it? It's 420, but why don't you keep it till you get the part? No, oh, take it now for luck. All right. No, please, keep it all, Ernie. No tips from you, kid. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Hey, Chuck, another cup of coffee. Come on up. Tell me about this. How did it all happen? Well, you know Mr. Morgan. Mr. Lloyd Morgan? He's the one who wrote Saturday Spiders. It was a pretty good show, wasn't it? Pretty good. It was the hit of the season. Well, I played it in the sticks. And Mr. Morgan remembered me. And he thinks I'm just right for the leading role in this. All I have to do now is convince the producer. <laughs> Think you can? Oh, I've got to. I met him today. And he asked me to come back and read for him tonight at 9 o'clock. 35 minutes, oh, I've got to convince him, Ernie. You don't know how important this is to me. Yes, I do. Chance at the top, it's the most important thing in the world. And especially when it's Broadway, and it's the one thing you've wanted all your life. Here's your box of candy, you like that? Well, thanks, that's swell. Somebody's birthday? Yeah, something like that. Well, bye, Linda, and uh, good luck. Thanks, I'll need it. How did it go? It was a ball. 400 carats of loose goods. He won't recognize you if he sees you again. 
The Dutchman? He never knew what hit him. There's $50,000 waiting for us. Let's go and get it. Victor, I'm worried. There's nothing to worry about, baby. Nobody saw us together. No, but the watchman saw me. Three hours before it happened. You've got a perfect alibi. You were here working by then. That's what I want to get out of New York. How soon can we get out of town? We'll be on the boat tomorrow morning. Why not tonight? I have to take the stuff into Christopher and trade it for dollar bills. We'll stop by my house on the way. I'm expecting a phone call. About the boat tickets? No tickets, baby. We made a deal to go on a freighter. The phone calls about our passports. Two weeks from the day, we'll be in France. I'll buy you the most beautiful clothes in Paris. Victor. Hey, driver, take me to the wall. Cab's taken. But see here, young man, your flag is up. I said it's taken. Here's a taxi, Polly. Three hundred Park South, driver. Ernie. You know him? My husband. He'll kill me. If he was going to play rough, he wouldn't have run away. You don't know what he's like. He broods about things. Then suddenly he explodes. Okay, baby. We won't hold still for him. Taxi? We'll forget my place. We'll go straight to Washington Square. Washington Square, driver. a police dog. You mean a German shepherd? I mean a police dog. You keep them in the back room, don't you? Just a minute, Rollins. Police dogs are dangerous. Perhaps the lady had better wait outside. I'd rather she came along with me, Christopher. Hello, Mickey. Hi, Vic. Uh, Rollins insisted on bringing the young lady to see us, Mickey. He did. Watch it, Mickey. Here are your diamonds, Chris. 400 carats of the best. Victor, do I have to be here? Can't I wait outside? You show excellent judgment, madam. It would have been better if Mr. Rollins had come alone. Better for who? This is my girl, Chris. You lied to You made a mistake, Rollins. Don't tell me I didn't get the right stones. Mm. You got the right stones, all right. But you got them in the wrong way. Here you are. They're all yours. I don't want them. I want the money. I'm no longer interested. It was your own deal. You sent me after them. I'm afraid not. You said there was 50,000 in it. I can't remember. You better start to remember. In any event, I never deal with women. You heard what Mr. Christopher said. 
So it's a cross. I never cross friends, Rawlins. Here, pick it up. Put it in your pocket. Now then, our business is finished. You may leave now. This wasn't our deal. I was to bring you the diamonds, you were to pay me the 50,000. I never do business with women. She'll be on the boat tomorrow morning. We're taking the boat from Jersey. No, Victor. Have a pleasant journey. We needed Pauline. I had to find out where he kept the stones. The Dutchman likes women. You mean he liked them? What? He ain't breathing so good anymore. Haven't you listened to the radio? No. You killed him when you clubbed him with the gun. You didn't tell me. You said he was all right. You didn't tell me you'd killed him. You see why I never deal with women? Shut up. I won't shut up. You said you wouldn't hurt him. You told me it would be perfectly safe. You lied to me. Look, why did you have to hit him? Why did you have to kill him? Well, it shouldn't take long. Time, 208. Clear Madison Square Garden. 21. 208, uh, pink to Station 4. Yes. Drive 223, right. yellow to Grand Central. 223, Grand. check. Stan, they need a bunch of cabs over the garden. Anybody reads me, get out of the garden, they're short of cabs. Anybody reads me, get out of the garden, they're short of cabs. But let me know where you are. They'll be right there. Thank you, sir. Hey, take over a minute, will you? No? Okay. Get yourself another jockey and check it out. What's with you? You and your box of candy. Take it home to Eloise. Wait a minute. When a woman's in love with her husband, she doesn't like to see him get clipped on the jaw. Brother, what you've got to learn about women. What's eating you tonight? You and your phony advice. Break it to her gently. I'll break it to her with this right across her lying mouth. Take it easy, take it easy. What are you so mad about? So it ends up I'm married to a tramp. Do I have to like it? Take the keys, I'm checking out. Hey, you can't walk out in the middle of this shift. Who says I can't? I can do anything I want to do. I can bust you right in the jaw. Hold it, Nobody's hold gonna it. Stop I'm me. on your side. What are you getting sore at me for? You and your phony advice. I'm sorry, Stan. Not you. It's just that I guess I'm so burned up, I take it out on everybody I see. This ain't the way you're fighting when you're in the ring, champ. Used to get clipped on the chin in the ring. You played it cool and smart. This is different. Nah. Look, I'm your trainer for a long time, Ernie. When you'd get in a jam, you'd listen to me. Want to listen to me now? So I'm listening. Get in your cab. Get down to the drugstore. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Roll with those punches till your head clears. Here, I'll come and find you as soon as my shift is over. We'll go someplace and sit down and talk this thing out, calm and sensible-like. What do you say? All right. All right. Lady, that's our low calorie special. Hi, Luscious. You back already? Chuck, have you seen Ernie? Not since he left for that box of candy. Oh, yeah. What's the matter? Didn't you get that part? I've got to find Ernie right away. Well, Stan may be able to get him on the cab radio. You want to call him and find out? Oh, yeah. There he is. Ernie, I have to talk to you. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Please. You can't go in there. Ernie, 
I'm in trouble. Look. Oh, look, I know it isn't fair to drag you into this, but there's nobody I can turn to. Nobody. So you're in trouble, so what? You don't want to help me. I can see that. Never mind. Look, kid, I'll help you if I can, but don't spar with me. Tell me what your problem is, I'll see what I can do. All right. Ernie. I killed a man. You what? Extra, extra! Read all about it. Extra, extra! If you want to help me, you've got to come to the theater with me. Now. Line. There! Take it easy, kid. When you clipped on the chin, that's exactly when you have to keep your head. Otherwise, you get your brains knocked out. Understand? Understand? Thanks. Now you better tell me how it happened. I came here at nine o'clock to keep my appointment. And he was sitting there behind the desk. Who is he? Waldo Dackett, the producer. The desk light was on. Here. I, I felt there was something strange about it. I, I couldn't think what it was. It hit me later, but then it was too late. What hit you later? That we were alone in the theater. He said, sit over there, my dear. So I did. And then he said that he had no doubt I could act the role satisfactorily. Now, the fact that Mr. Morgan wanted me was, was in my favor, too. But putting me in the play was going to make it difficult to finance, because I was an unknown. None of the backers had ever heard of me. I, I got excited. I, I came over here to plead with him. I said, Mr. Daggett, oh, Mr. Daggett, I want this role desperately. I'll work night and day. Nobody in the theater will give you the performance I'll give you. I'll make it my whole life. And then he, he got up. And he came around the side of the desk toward me. He said, Miss James, there is a possibility I'll give you this role. But if I do, it'll be a gamble, a long shot. And then he said, when a man bets a long shot, He's entitled to a big payoff. The payoff he wanted was me. He said if, if he put me in the play, it would be because of personal reasons. It would be because when he first saw me this afternoon, he'd, he'd felt this strong physical attraction. I began to stammer. I said, you know how badly I want this role. 
please don't put it on that basis. I don't care about the money. I'll, I'll work for anything you want to pay me. I'll work for nothing. And then he, he put his hands on me, his fat, sweaty hands. I said, don't, don't, please don't. I, I began to fight with him. He was, he was so much stronger than I. It was a, it was a poker on the stand. I grabbed him and hit him hard. human. You can only stand so much, then you have to fight back. The harder you hit, the harder you hit back. But Ernie, murder. There are worse things than murder. You can kill someone an inch at a time. Now listen to me. Listen to me. How many people knew you were going to be here tonight? Oh, Morgan, the director. Half a dozen people. And when they find the body, they'll know you were with them. Yes. Yes. We'll have to get rid of it. How? I'll put him in the back of my cab like he was a drunk. Drive him to the Hudson. I know an old gravel pit. I'll bury him there. No. No, I can't let you. It's too dangerous. It's dangerous to walk across the street or to park your cab in front of a florist shop. Let's get going. What's that? I don't know. There are rats in this old theater. Could be. How about the watchman? What watchman? The door was open. He left it open for me. I'll get him in the back of the cab. Light! Simply wonderful. Waldo, there's your big situation from the second act of the play. And this little girl played it like a real Broadway star. <laughs> oh, I told you it wasn't fair to drag you into this. But really, there was nobody else I could turn to. Old gravel pit, I'll bury him there. You gave me chills, brother. Very convincing, wasn't she, Waldo? Not bad. <laughs> now, Miss Henderson, you took down the cabbie's dialogue, didn't you? Because we might want to use some of these lines. If I can read my shorthand, I'm not accustomed to writing in the dark. <laughs> this is a great gag. Ernie, let me explain. No, Linda, let me explain. You see, young man, I've just... Am I any the... younger than you? No, we're both young men. Ernie, this is Mr. Morgan. He's the one who wants me in the play. This was a bit of an experiment, my friend. We were out to prove that Miss James could play this part with complete conviction. And she certainly did. A triumph. She not only convinced us it could happen in real life, she convinced you it was happening in real life. I'm completely <laughs> sold on the girl. What about you, Waldo? Uh, reluctantly. But the answer is yes. Oh, that's wonderful. You won't be sorry. And you won't either, I promise. There ought to be a good publicity story in this somewhere. Oh, Ernie, don't be angry with me. I had to do it or I'd never gotten the part. Oh, Ernie's not going to get sore. Not when he can come up with lines like, there are worse things than murder. You can kill somebody an inch at a time. Nevertheless, but... I think a small honorarium is in order. Freddie, give this man a $20 bill. Certainly, Mr. Daggett. Here you are. Keep it. Keep your money. Keep the lines. And keep your theater with the rats in it. Just a minute, young man. You can't talk to Miss James like that. Oh, oh, Ernie! 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 But in my book, you're just one more phony. Waldo, I got a great idea. I know how we can have a smash hit before we open. Operator, get me the police.
could have been the champ. I'd have been a star if I hadn't married you. Next week, Driscoll will be driving a taxi. <laughs> Who do you like in the sixth at High Leo? Well, one ten in Washington Park. The way I figure it, no regrets is a shoe in. Thanks, Pop. Hi, Pop. Hello, Ernie boy. Well, you've been keeping yourself. How'd they treat you, huh? Treating me all right. Pop, I want you to get me a fight. I can't do that, boy. The commission barred you. Only in New York. There are 47 other states. But you've been away from the ring for three years. You lose your timing in three years. I can get it back in three weeks. I almost believe you're serious. Let you and me take a little walk, huh? Ernie! Ernie Driscoll! I saw you tonight. You were great. You almost seen a new champagne. If he had me for his manager, he'd have made it. <laughs> if he'd have had you for his manager, he'd be walking on his heels. Come on, Ernie, let's find better company. Oh, it was a great fight. He had the champ down. Yeah, it was a good Now, let's do some real talking. Ernie, you can't go back in the ring. You know what the doc said would happen if he got hit again in the optic nerve. Harry Gribb had a bad eye. He was one of the best. But Harry Greb was only 32 years old when he died. I don't want that to happen to you. I didn't come here to get a lecture, Pop. I came here to get a fight. Wait a minute. There's lots of money in fighting these days. But there ain't enough money to pay you for losing your eyesight. 50 bucks do you any good? God, it ain't the money, Pop. I got a hit. I got a hit. I got to get back to doing the one thing I know how to do. You talked this over with Pauline? Pop, you gonna get me a fight or not? Ernie, I don't want you to fight again. Then I'll find me a manager who does. Ernie, there's a lot of managers in this business, and they're interested in just one thing, 33 and a third percent of the purse. Why, you could get rosin in your eye, nobody'd wash it out. You could get a cut that wouldn't even take you to the dock. If you've got to fight again, Ernie, you'll fight for me. Thanks, Bob. Come around tomorrow and work out. We'll see what kind of shape you're in. Jive, 629, stage entrance, Carnegie Hall. Ernie Driscoll's wife on the line. She wants to talk to you. Yeah? Stan, this is Pauline. Could you get Ernie on the radio for me and ask him to pick me up right away? It's very important. I'll try to get him for you, Pauline. Hang on. Jive, 539, come in. Come in, 539. 539, check. I got Pauline on the wire. She wants you to pick her up. Don't blow your stack, champ. She's coming your way, and that's the way you want it. Go pick her up. See what she's got to say. I'll pick her up. a boy, champ. Okay, Pauline, where do you want him to get you? The address is 304 Park South. That's the Park South Bar. 27 got it. East 87. Ernie, 304 Park South. 304, doesn't she mean 300 Park South? No, 304, the Park South Bar. Okay. Why do we have to wait here? It's been 15 minutes, he may not come at all. Take it easy, baby. He'll come. 
And he'll wait in the bar while you go home and pack. Yeah, hey, cab's pulling up. See if it's him. Look this way. You're imagining things. Suppose he doesn't wait in the bar. We took care of that, didn't we? Everything's all right, baby. It's working out just the way I planned it. Victor, don't. You got nothing to worry about anymore, baby. Nothing at all. Say, has everybody stopped drinking in New York? You know, if you ask me, they passed a new law or something. Another 19th Amendment. The woman who phoned us to wait. Did she say how long? No. She said she'd be here pretty quick. Now, don't get restless. There hasn't been a customer in here since 8 o'clock. Have another glass of beer. No, thanks. Come on, be my guest. That guy gets lonesome. If she does show up, tell her she got the wrong cab driver. There are 20,000 other cabs in New York, and all of them got a back seat. I can't even give the stuff away. Ah! Please, I must talk to you. You've talked enough But, Ernie, the police day. are coming. What police? The people in the theater swore a warrant for you. Assault and battery. I might have known it. Any time you get hooked up with a dame, you're bound to end up in trouble. Oh, Ernie, I'm terribly sorry. I came to tell you I'd testify for you. Thanks. I feel awful about it, especially since they're not even angry at you. They're only doing it for publicity. And they'd have me arrested just to get their names in the paper. Oh, they think it'll make a big front-page news story. The place so good it fooled you into believing it was real. You were ready to face a murder charge just to help the leading lady, me. All right, so you've told me. Now, what are you hanging around for? Get out of here. Well, I'm not through yet. I want you to know that I quit the play. When they called the police, I said I'd have no part of it, and I walked out on them. So you walked out. Now walk out of here. Well, not until I finish what I have to say. I was a real louse tonight, wasn't I? Yeah. I know. I was a heel, selfish, ruthless, ready to cut anybody's throat to get on Broadway. That about covers it. Well, Ernie, I'm thoroughly ashamed of myself. The least I can do is, is pay you fine. There won't be any fine. You see that? That's a fighter's fist. It's dangerous, can kill somebody. So when a fighter's arrested for street balling, they don't find him. They put him in jail and throw away the key. Is that why you're packing? Are you running away? Not from the police. I'm running away from a bad marriage. From a woman who thought she married the ringside seats and ended up at the gallery. No mink coats, no diamond rings, no nothing. But she was ambitious like you. She found herself another man. Well, they can have her. I sure picked a fine time to drag you into my problem. You sure did. Hang around here all you want. I'm leaving. If I can get them to withdraw the charges, I'll phone you at the cab company. I won't be there. Where can I find you? You won't. Uh. Close the door, quick. do that for? You don't think... No, of course not. But a stranger might call the police. If they find her in your cab, they'll think you... 
Yeah. I don't think I killed her. Somebody wants them to think I killed her. That guy down at the florist shop. He had her call me at the garage so there'd be a record of the call. And he got me down to Park South and killed her. Put her in my cab. Walk away, you don't know me. No, I'm your witness. That's how you find her. With you. No, you're not. Get Curly. out. Give me a chance to square myself. Jive 539. All right, I'll check with you later. Any time, officer. Jive 539. Stay out, 539. Dan, this is urgent. Did you recognize Pauline's voice when she called in tonight? Oh, hello, Jack. Hang on a minute, will you? Stan, this is Ernie. Ernie Driscoll. Yeah, I know. I've just been yeah. talking about you. Moment, Johnny Law dropped by. Wanted to see how you were getting along. Yeah, you Don't kid me, Stan. Thank Tell you. me about Pauline. Hello, Joe. I talked to her myself, Ernie. And the cops were just here looking for you. Oh? What for? I don't know, but they got a warrant for you. You didn't take a poke at Pauline after you picked her up. No, why? Well, the warrant's for assault and battery. Thanks, Dan. I'll call later. That's from the fight in the theater. Yeah. Such a pretty girl. Always laughing when I first met her. Wonder if it's my fault she stopped laughing. I'm sure it wasn't. You. You loved her. Once. You said something about a man in a flower shop. Who's he? I don't know, but we're going to find out right now. 300 Park South. Stay here. Get away from the cab. The police might find it. I'm sorry to wake you up, lady, but one of your tenants gave me a $20 bill to change, and I forgot the number of his apartment. If I don't get him his change back, he's liable to think I stole it and report me to the cab company. What did he look like? Sharp-looking guy, around 35. Nice blue suit. Must have cost a hundred and a half. About so tall. Oh, you mean Mr. Rawlins. Uh, number 32 upstairs. Thanks, lady.
Did you find him? No, nobody there. Name's Rollins. I'm gonna break in. Any diamonds, Kitty? He's got them on him. I combed this joint pretty good. He's already fenced them to somebody else. Rollins? Who else? Let's sit down and chew the fat, Kitty. You might have something for me. Hold it. Cab driver, huh? Yeah. Where do you fit in? He owes me some money. Yeah, I bet he does. Like a split of 50 grand. What you do, drive the getaway car? Yeah, I drove it. And he ran out on you. Is that the deal? It's the deal. Okay. Now, it's your turn to double-cross him. Where do he say to meet him for the payoff? He didn't say. Don't hand me that! Where'd he say? I don't know. Spill, punk, or I'll splash your brains out. Where'd he say to meet him? Flower shop? What time? An hour ago. And he didn't show. No. What about the girl? What's her name? Girl? I said girl! What's her name? Pauline? Yeah. Pauline what? That's right. Pauline what? Where does he come in? He's, uh... Come on! was all right when she left the pet shop. Where was this? Washington Square. But Rollins didn't have any money. Just the diamonds. I figured if Christopher doesn't want them, why shouldn't I get them? Where would Rollins go if he didn't come home? How do I know? Where would he go? I don't know. Where would he go? Said he was going to catch a boat from Jersey City. Ernie, the police. They found your taxi cab. We're getting out right now. Get up. 
Over there. In. I told you the arrangement has been cancelled, Rob. Don't be inhospitable. Chris, ask me in. I don't want you here. Wait till you've heard the news. I've executed your orders. I issued no orders. Oh, yes, you did. You said you didn't want to deal with Pauline. So I got rid of her. What are you saying? Just between us, I think you were right about women in business. They're not dependable. You're a reckless man, Rawlins. Yeah. And I don't like reckless men. Now that the woman is out of the way, suppose we complete our business. You were seen with a, the police will look for you. They'll look for her husband. I took care of that. Here are your diamonds. Fifty thousand dollars worth. C O D. I don't have the money here. Pushing your luck. I'm protecting it. You could turn me in now, but after you pay for the diamonds, you'll be part of the deal. You can pay me in goldfish. Yes. Fifty thousand. Now put these in the safe. Congratulations, Christopher. It went just the way you planned it. Don't bother to show me out. Five three nine, come in. Where are you, five three nine? Johnson. Thank you very much. 448, code green. All right. 539, come in. Location, 539. Give me a breather, Edna. Sure. Right I gotta talk to you, Arnie. Excuse us, will you, Linda? Look, the cops was here again. They found Pauline in your cab. She was dead. I didn't do it, Stan. That's good enough for me, champ. But I know who did. A hood by the name of Rawlins. That phone call from Pauline was a frame to make it look as if I did it. It was? But, well, gee, maybe I pinned it on you. Look, I'm trying to cover for you with the cops. See, so I said you went to pick up your wife. That's when they tell me she's dead. How could you know? Look, let me see out-of-town call sheets. Sure, but what good will that do you? It's one way to find Rollins. He's got to get a cab. He wants to get to Jersey City tonight. You ain't seen him, okay? Okay with me. Thanks, Ed. Now, let's see here. Poughkeepsie, Newark. Where were they started from? Somewhere around Park South. Nothing on that page. We ain't had a trip to Jersey City all night. Can you call some of the other cab companies? Sure, get me blue and white, Edna. Listen, go up in George's office in case the cops come back, huh? Okay, come on. 210 to station 27. Blue and white, this is Hogan at radio. 20,000 cabs in this town, I gotta find the one he took. Ernie, your mouth is bleeding. 
kids, you help me a lot at Park South. Now, do me a favor. What? Walk out the door. If they pick me up for this rap, they'll arrest you, too. Yeah. It's not your fight. Well, I've made it my fight. Look, you're square. Let's call it even. Ernie, I don't enlist very often, but when I do, it's for the duration. Don't mix me up. Women aren't like that. What are women like? They're like the dames that hung around my dressing room after I'd won a fight. All soft fur and perfume they must have put on just before they walked in the door. <laughs> They'd run their hands over my wet shoulders and tell me what a big man I was. It was easy to believe with the yell of the crowd in my ears, but where were the same dames tonight I got my head kicked in? In the other guy's dressing room. Ernie, all women aren't like that. Get out, get out, will you? I got a murder rap hanging over me. You were ready to help me when you thought it was the other way around. When I was a kid, I thought I'd grow up and meet a girl who'd stick in my corner no matter what. Then I grew up. Things aren't the way you think they're gonna be when you're a kid. Listen, Linda. If I met a girl like that now, it'd be too late. Don't you understand? Maybe better than you do. But Ernie, it doesn't matter. We, we've got lots of time. Me Hi, officer. You're back looking for Ernie Driscoll. He ain't been in. Most of your drivers know Driscoll by sight, don't they? Yeah, I guess so. Send out a message over your radio. Tell them if they see Ernie Driscoll to call the police, will you? Sure thing. 21 West, 92nd. Attention, all drivers. Attention, all drivers. You see Ernie Driscoll, report to the police. Attention, all drivers. You see Ernie Driscoll, call in. Oh, uh, did you ever hear him talking about a girl by the name of uh, Linda James? No, why? We think she's with him. Phone headquarters if you hear from him, will you? Sure thing. Well, so long, officer. Drop back. You think we can help you? Hey, Stan, didn't he ask for Ernie Driscoll? Hold it, hold it. Audi Art 6, blue to green on the River Drive. 1217. What's with you? You're growing stupid or something? You want to see one of your pals thrown in jail? Gee, Stan, I'm sorry. All right, Scram. Radio Care Company. Thank you. Blue and white cab calling back. Hogan at radio. You did? Where'd they come from? Yeah, okay, thanks. Cops are in again, huh? Yeah, they know Linda's with you. Any news from the other cab companies? Nothing. Look, suppose a cop should come back. You gotta get out of here, Ernie. Now grab 3035 and cruise around till you hear from me. And get going now. Will you please get out of here and keep cruising? Thanks, Dan. Get me blue and white back, Edna. 251, clear. Yes, yes, yes. But is there anyone besides Monk Beasley who can forge a passport? Not on such short notice, huh? I see. Then keep trying to find Monk. What hit you? An electric fan? Somebody jobbed me. I got a call from a tomato. Said she was lonesome. Why didn't I come over and have a drink? When I walked in the door, the walls fell in. Victor Rollins. What made you think of him? A couple of guys I never saw before. Rollins planned it to get you out of the way. He was here a half an hour ago. Took $50,000 from me. Fifty thousand. Rainbow, this is Hogan at Radio Cab. What's with those Jersey City calls? Thirty thirty-five to stand. Come in, thirty thirty-five. Any dope yet? Nothing. Keep cruising. Christopher speaking. Hello. Hello, Monk. Has Victor Rawlins come to you for a passport in the last 24 hours? Yeah, we're just leaving to deliver it. You're making a delivery to him? Where? Arbolite Cafe. It's over in Jersey City. Now, mark this carefully, Monk. Wait another hour before you make delivery. You want me to wait another hour before I deliver the passport? That's right. One hour. Rollins? He'll be at the Harbor Light Cafe in Jersey City for one hour.
we'll drive over there and take care of them permanently. Giant 628, clear 96th Street. Giant 625, I'm clear at the garden. 3035 to stand. Come in, 3035. I'm heading for Jersey. Any news yet? Not yet. I'll let you know. You've got to locate him, Stan. Time's running out on me. I'm trying, champ. All I can do is try. Can't you hustle it up? Look, Ernie, hold it. Black and gold just reported a Jersey trip. Get this. A blue suit and a gray hat. That's him, Stan. Sorry, Ernie. The pickup was in Washington Square. Washington Square. Washington Square, wait a minute. That's the pet shop. That's it, where'd they take him? 99 River Street, the Harbor Light Cafe. He's along here someplace. Just let him still be there. What are you gonna do? I'll beat it out of him. It's a public cafe, they won't let you. Then I'll get him outside. How? I don't know, but I'll figure a way. In the cab. Ernie, wait, listen. Where do you think you're going? Let me go in alone and try to pick him up, and then you'll be waiting when we come out. Not a chance. The man's a killer. Well, he can't hurt me in front of people in the cafe. And he's not going to have the opportunity to get back in the car. Ernie, hey, please. you, cabby. Come here a minute. Stay here. Come on. What's the idea of parking next to a fire hydrant? You know better than that. Sorry, officer. I'll move it in a minute. You'll move it now. Okay. Driver, will you wait here till I come out with my escort, please? Are you gonna quit stalling? Or am I gonna have to give you a ticket? That's better. Take it easy, Kitty. You and me have been seeing a lot of each other lately. I want to introduce you to a couple of pals. Come on. Who is this? One of the guys that beat me up. He must have come here to meet Rollins. Put him in the front seat. I didn't notice nobody in particular. Look, a lot of people come in and out of this place on a busy night. I can't notice all of them. What'd you say his name was? I didn't say. I'm never gonna speak his name again. I'm through with him. What'll it be? I was to meet Vic Rollins. He's down the last booth. Vic? Hello, Monk. Did you bring the merchandise? Right here. Did you find out Penny Arcade all right? Yes. Is this what you wanted?
And this stuff sticks like glue. 500 for the passport. When you get on a boat at the coastline dry dock, it's right across the way. Crew's on shore, I'll leave, and the watchman's been fixed. He'll be gone in about, ooh, 45 minutes. What time do we sail? Well, the crew's due back at 6 a.m. She'll leave dry dock in about an hour. Thanks, Mark. Have a good trip. I'll be right back. Okay, honey. Guys, dead in here. Revive me, baby. I'm living now. Still inside. We'll wait. This guy's girl's in there, too. With Rollins? No, she's dancing with some guy. What's she trying to do? You can't leave her in there with that killer. You're his pal, aren't you? I never saw him but once in my life. Then how do you know he's a killer? He killed Pauline, my wife. Seems to check. You know, I could knock him off right through the window. With fifty thousand dollars in his pocket. That's right. He can't be there much longer. He has to catch that boat. We'll get him when he comes out. Look, you can't kill him. He's my only witness. Witness? Witness for what? He's got me framed for the murder of my own wife. How unfortunate, Bud. Listen. Did you say you were going to buy me a drink? You know what's wrong with you? You talk too much. Say something. Beat it. Oh, don't be so tough. We could have fun. Not tonight. Oh, honey, you don't know what you're missing. I said, not tonight. You play rough. Yes. I 
Maybe I like guys who play rough. Give me your phone number. I'll call you sometime. I don't believe in sometime. With me, it's now or never. It'll have to be never. Too bad. Would you change your mind if my name was Pauline? What do you know about Pauline? That's different, isn't it? Who sent you? Wouldn't you like to know? How did you find me here? Oh, oh you're really interested, aren't you? You're gonna talk and talk fast. Uh-oh. Not here. Now talk. I wouldn't do that, Vicky boy. Never slug a lady. All right, kiddies. Let's take a walk. stops. Dump this fellow right out on the pier. Shoot him. And the girl. Mickey will shoot Victor. We'll make it look like the thieves fell out and killed each other. Understand? Look, I don't like to shoot women. But there's $50,000 in Rollins' pocket. You and Mickey can split it. No. 
fighting on instinct alone. Yes, on instinct alone. He doesn't want this fight stopped. He can't see out of that eye. There's no doubt there's something critically the matter with Frisco's eye. <laughs> like Dempsey and moves like Corbett. You know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he was the next champion. Looks real good. Sorry you changed your mind a year ago. Glad I took your advice, Bob. <laughs> Still driving the cab, huh? Oh, no. Got myself a filling station. Anytime you want a lube job, call on me. Sure will. Oh, make yourself a partner, huh? Sure. Right over there. Now, this is making about 8,000 gallons of gas a day, 600 quarts oil, yes, and there's well, tires, uh, batteries, yes. spark plugs. Well, if you take these cards and sort of Hi, strip it the board. Hi. Don't tell me you're trying to promote the gas from the cab company. Oh, no. The cab company buys gas from the same place we do. Oh. But you see... But uh, most of the cabbies got jalopies of their own, ain't they? And they got to buy their gas someplace. Well, they're going to buy from us. Sure, <laughs> I'll just pass the cards around. And if I catch any of those hackies patronizing another station, Right in the nose. How's that for sales talk, huh? That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> so long, Stan. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Mrs. Driscoll. Bye, Stan. So long, champ. Hey, Ernie. Uh, don't forget what I told you, you know. When you get her home, whisper in her ear. Oh, I'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> 